XG or expected goals. What does it mean? How is it calculated? What is it used for? And ultimately, what's the point? Okay, so before I get into this video, I will say that if you are an experienced analyst that deals with expected goals, you're probably not gonna to learn too much from this video. It's more so for the beginners. Maybe you've heard the term used before and you're unsure of what it actually means, or maybe you've never heard it at all. You're looking or interested in a role in analysis, and so this video is for you. I'm gonna break down what expected goals actually is, how it is calculated, kind of how the clubs get hold of this data and how it's produced, what it's used for and what it actually tells us based on what we've learned so far from the use of expected goals. Okay, so let's start right at the beginning in terms of what it actually is. So expected goals is effectively just a probability of a shot resulting in a goal. So you can imagine shots get taken regularly during a football match. Not all shots are equal, as you will know. So a shot from, you know, right in front of the goal is probably, as you will know, worth much more than a shot from 50 yards out on the right-hand side. So each of these shots, or each, any shot basically, is given a score in terms of that XG or expected goal. So for example, if I said, or you were told a shot has an XG of 0.2, effectively that's 20%, so you would imagine if 100 shots were taken from that exact position, you would expect to see 20 of them result in goals. So on the whole, it is quite simple. You might have actually seen it used on the likes of Match of the Day and different you know, broadcast um, solutions at the moment where they do kind of sometimes show the, the actual score and the expected goal score. So on a single game, it's probably not that useful, but it does at least give you a chance to understand the type of shots that were basically had within that particular game. So moving on from what it actually is. So as I say, it's mainly just the probability of a shot resulting in a goal. So let's kind of speak about next how it is actually calculated. Okay, so there's actually more than one way of calculating this. So each different company or club, you know, they might actually go by a different model. So and what I mean by a model is the way in which they collect the data to produce the actual result. So there are different companies out there which clubs will pay basically to, to receive data and one of their data sets will be expected goals. So the basic of expected goals, you would kind of see the distance to goal. So this is, let's say you are in the penalty area, the ball at your feet, and you're about to pull, pull the trigger for a shot. So the first aspect that is recorded is the distance you are to the goal. So how far away from the goal are you in you know, yards, feet, whatever. So are you 12 yards out, for example, let's say. So then you can think the next thing is what angle are you to the actual goal? So you can imagine a shot from 12 yards dead center is much easier to score from than a shot from 12 yards on the byline, for example. You know, it's a lot harder to score, in which case if it's harder to score, the expected goals will be lower. So you've got the distance to goal, the angle to goal. The next part would be the body part used for the shot. So, you know, you can obviously strike the ball with your foot, you can take a header, and again, it's pretty straightforward to understand that you know a shot from 12 yards with you know if you strike it with your your good foot is gonna then result in more goals than if it bounces off your ass cheek from 12 yards so the type of body part used for the shot is an important factor in terms of working out the the expected goals score and then you've also got the type of assist so how did that ball get to you in the first place as a striker so this could be via a through ball it could be a cross it could be a set piece it could be a dribble so all of those things so you can imagine one a one-off shot, let's say the striker, you can look at all those things. So how did the ball get to that particular striker in the first place? Where is he on the pitch? How far out is he from the goal? And also is he using his good foot, his bad foot, his head or whatever. So all of them things play into the calculation to create the expected goal score. Okay, so just going back to something I said a little before that was companies and clubs use different models. So you know, the, what I've described there is quite a basic one. So you've got companies out there now that are finding new ways to record this data and each new aspect or each new avenue that is added helps to make the expected score more accurate. So, you know, if you use different models, you might have the same shot produced and an expected goal score of 0.2 with one model, but then with a more accurate model, it might actually be 0.3. And I'll tell you exactly why in a second. Okay, so before we move on to that, I do have to quickly ask you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you do find value from this video or any of my other videos, it would be very, very much appreciated if you did hit the subscribe button, give the video a like, and also check out some of the other videos linked down below. 
But let's get back to expected goals. So we're on now in terms of the improved model. So what can we add apart from the distance, angle, body part and assist? What can we add to that to make this model more accurate? So for example, I believe Statsbomb are doing this. So they are a provider of, of this data. So what I think they also include, and not just them, some others may do this as well, is the position of other people on the pitch. So firstly, the position of the goalkeeper. So again, when you think of it logically, it makes sense. So if you're having a shot from 12 yards dead center, you're more likely to score if the goalkeeper is either not in the goal or all the way over to one side, for example. Maybe he's made a just, made, just made a good save, he's down on the floor, so obviously it's gonna leave you with an open goal. So the position of the goalkeeper is a very important factor in determining the, basically the probability, again, that you're gonna score. So you've got the position of the goalkeeper, but not also the goalkeeper. You've also got the position of defenders. Are there defenders blocking your route to goal? Again, as you would imagine, that makes a big difference in the chances of you scoring, but also the position of any other attackers on your team. But then another really important one, actually, is the height of the ball. So again, when you think about it, it is pretty kind of, it does make sense. So, you know, the ball down on the ground at your feet is going to result in you using your foot rather than your head. So then that would then be, you know, more inclined to result in a goal. And again, that goes if the ball sort of on the sort of halfway of your body is probably going to result in a half volley or a first time volley. So again, the chances then would, I would presume, then dip in terms of how often that chance or that shot will result in a goal. Okay, so we've mentioned the different models and what is kind of used to, to create those models. And I touched upon a little bit earlier the, the companies that produce them. So you can produce your own model and all it basically is done is looking at previous data. So for example, let's say a shot from 12 yards out at a 30 degree angle to the goal. What would basically happen to collect that particular data is to look back at hundreds or thousands of shots previously that have been taken from that particular position and then you can use that to model and kind of understand okay so we've looked at thousands of shots from this position and we know obviously the more shots you look at the more data you look at the more accurate the actual score will be and that's why it also increases then when you look at all these different facets of it in terms of the position of the goalkeeper etc so it all is done by looking at previous previous shot data so you could technically create your own yourself probably wouldn't be as accurate but then you have these you know these data companies that will produce this and then the clubs professional clubs high up the pyramids will subscribe to these companies and they will in return obviously get the data which they can then use with their analysts and obviously use that to create further um further things with the data as well so that's how it is actually created so Moving from that, we're going to talk about now how is it used and what is it used for. Okay, so previously I did say on a game-by-game -game basis, it's probably not that important. You don't actually learn that much. You might, you know, understand what kind of chances and shots were created in a particular game, but a game might only have anywhere between. Wait, a game could actually have two or just two or three shots in the whole game. So you can imagine it's not very accurate in terms of telling a good picture. So obviously, over a longer period of time, that becomes better. So. If you've got the data over a long period of time, you can then start to understand how a team plays. And that's not to say how well they are at finishing, but also mainly in terms of what kind of chances they are creating. So where are they taking their shots from? You know, you would imagine that a team is far more dangerous if they have a lot more shots in the six yard box than the area outside of the box. Because again, you would imagine the six yard box shots are more likely to result in goals. So the better teams you'll find create better chances and obviously then better chances have a more probability of ending in goals. So if you've got the data in terms of understanding how a team plays, you know, you'll actually find betting companies use expected goals quite heavily. And you know, if you're professional gamblers and stuff like that, they will rely heavily on this data because it's it's a good indication of how a team will play and obviously nothing's set in stone in terms of past doesn't equal the future but you know if you've got data to back up how a team plays and what they're expected to do that will then kind of lead into potentially you'll be able to predict in who can beat who in, in particular games based on styles of play. So sticking to the same theme of styles of play so one person or at least one proponent of how a team plays you know is is the manager so let's say a club is looking for a particular manager they can look at the expected goals for the team that they you know that particular manager is currently with and then that might give them an indication to or at least help them better understand how that team plays in terms of what chances they create and if that's down to the philosophy of the you know the tactics that the manager installs so if you're looking for a manager you can potentially look at you know 
a manager that would fit your similar style, your similar style of play, but also your style of creating chances. So, you, you know, you can use it in that regard as well. So in terms of recruitment, it's also used for that as well. So you've, you, let's say you're looking to buy a striker, for example, with the expected goals data, you'll be able to see how well of a finisher this particular player is, but also, again, where the chances are coming from. So that leads me on to my next point in terms of I think the shot quality is more important than the actual finishing ability. So in terms of what it's used for, we've got gamblers and betting companies. We've got obviously clubs and, and you can kind of model and kind of predict who will win particular games. You can see the style of play of particular teams and also particular managers. So moving on now in terms of what have we actually learned from the data that we've collected from you know previous and hundreds of thousands of shots over the last several several years. So I'm taking these next points from the Statsbomb website. I mentioned them earlier. They are a company that will produce this data for you. So a few things that they've kind of noted down, and some of them obviously you will say, okay, that's pretty obvious, but it's just you know it's backed up by the numbers as well. So I did mention this at the start of the video. So you, as you would would guess, central shots are more important. Central shots are more likely to, to end in a goal. And again, self-explanatory, you've got a more direct, you've got more of the goal to aim at, so you're more likely to score. So central shots are the best. Feet or kicking the ball is better than heading the ball. So if you had, a, you know, if you were taking a shot from a particular position on the pitch with all of the same things and the only thing you changed was the body part, you would more likely result in a goal if you take it with your foot than your head, for example. So shots are better than headers overall. Crosses are very hard to convert, so, you know, some clubs don't, you know, some clubs kind of, well, there's, there's many different philosophies of football, as you will know, so some clubs employ, um, you know, they, they will cross heavily in the game, so they might have a tall striker, and one of their tactics might be get the ball wide and cross it in. Others don't do that, and they play more centrally, so it's found from the data that crosses are hard to convert, and again, as we spoke about right at the start, the type of assist is integral in kind of calculating the actual expected goals score. So as well as that, the point I just mentioned a little bit before that was shot quality is key. So if you go back long enough, the average of, you know, the, the average score for an expected goals is pretty much the same across all strikers. Yes, there will be some, you know, some strikers that are better than others. Um, but overall, not many strikers will then go too far from the average, which then means that the shot quality is more important. So, for example, a top, top striker is going to be taking shots from better positions because they are better, they have better movement potentially, they can, they can, they've got better players that can send better through balls and they get in these better positions than maybe a, a lesser striker. So that's probably more of an indicator of who's going to score more goals and if there is a striker better it's more down to the actual quality of shots that they're taking rather than the, the the number of shots and how well they're finishing them anyway that's enough for me talking about expected goals so that's it for this video so if you have enjoyed the video please remember to subscribe to the channel and like the video thanks again for watching and have a great day